In this video, we're going to find out if an inexperienced modeler like myself can turn this eBay special into something that looks a lot like this. Here we go. I bought this cheap kit on eBay with the idea that it would get me back into the hobby, get me excited again, because I haven't built a kit since I was a kid. Started out with a cockpit, and really quickly I realized that this is not going to be an easy kit. Pairing that with my inexperience, it was a lot of work. Started off with a cockpit like you always do with every airplane model tried to clean up the parts as best I could. There was a lot of flash. Just a lot of stuff to do. Here's where I ran into my first real big problem. So I did a dry fit with this back wall of the cockpit and it seemed like it was gonna work. So I glued it into place according to the instructions. There's a little tab inside the fuselage that you line it up with and it was perfect. I sanded the cockpit out because there was a little bit of flash and here's where it went sideways. I was dry fitting the cockpit and this happened. What is that gap? I wasn't there when I dry fitted it, but apparently, after looking at the instructions, that's just the way it is. What are you gonna do? I tried to see if there was any surgery I could do, but moving the cockpit around would make it so that the console wouldn't fit into the cockpit correctly, so I had to just leave it with the gaps. This model doesn't allow you to have an open canopy, so I didn't bother trying to fix it. I grabbed this book, The Scale Viper by Peter Fleischmann. It has a lot of cool information about F-16s. I've always thought the F-16 was a cool plane ever since I was a kid, so I figured I was going to build a lot more of these. And so I bought some more. So I bought some from all of the major manufacturers. I hear Tamiya is the best, but I want to give all of them a shot. I'm mostly just using Vallejo paints. I like them. They're cheap. I can get them at my local hobby store. And they smell good. I like the way they smell. So I bought a whole bunch of them. I'm still not very good at this. This is probably going to take me a few models to kind of get, get the hang of what I'm supposed to be doing but I'm just making it up as I go. I don't think these colors are accurate, but they kind of look cool. The cockpit on this model has no detail, so I just made it up, added some paint here and there, and hopefully you can't really see it through the crappy canopy. So I just painted up the cockpit as best I could with the stuff that I had on hand. A little bit of dry brushing. And then to glue the cockpit into place, I used some of this super glue I got off of Amazon. It's for it's for acrylic nails, but it works really good. It's 
just about time to glue the two fuselage halves together. I gotta clean them up. They're kind of a mess. I'm still not very good at this. I'm not very good at shooting video either. I keep pulling the model out of the frame. Sorry about that. So I start off with some Tamiya Extra Thin. And then I try to tape it closed as best I can. I use this really cheap tape from Amazon. It's not very good. I will definitely need to invest in some Tamiya tape. So I just tape up one section at a time, glue it together, and hope it comes out okay. Okay, here's a part that I kind of screwed up. This wasn't the kit's fault, this was totally me. So there's a, that tab inside of the ring, it's supposed to line up with the cutout in one of the nozzle parts. And I didn't see that until the very end. So here I am thinking everything's great, putting it all together. And then I get to the end and it don't fit good. And that's when I realized I made a boo-boo. So basically I had to cut out a piece of the last part to get it to fit. That's what I get for not reading the instructions. Oh well. So here I am trying to fix my mistake by cutting out a slot that will line up with that tab inside. So there's a lot of gaps in this model. I decided to use some um, acrylic powder or acrylic fingernails. And then I mix that with some thick super glue. This stuff is really good at filling gaps. But you gotta go kinda quickly because it does cure real fast. But what's good about this is once it's on there and it dries within a few seconds, it's ready to be sanded. You don't have to wait a long time with other types of putty. Start off with some 220 sandpaper and go around where I put all of my filler and try to smooth it out. And I, what, what am I doing? I don't know. I, left hand, right hand, I just need to pick one. All right, I figured it out. So putting on the nose, there ended up being quite a big gap with the, the nose cone. 
I had to feel that. And then after sanding, I realized I did not do a very good job filling. So I took a permanent marker and went over all of my seams and that way I could see any high points and low points. And then I could add extra filler where there were low points. I've seen car modelers use this to highlight mold lines and then they sand them down and they know that they're smooth when the color goes away. So obviously there was a lot of low points still. So I coated the area with some more super glue and then kept sanding. Yeah, inside this intake was kind of hard too. There was an ugly seam. I did my best to fill it and sand it. It wasn't easy. So I built a little tool for myself, a little piece of sandpaper and a toothpick. And it worked out okay. That Vallejo primer was almost white though, it was hard to see, so I grabbed some of this one. This one's a little bit darker, kind of a light ghost gray color. The detail on this model wasn't very good, so I didn't really feel like I was losing anything by sanding it all off. There was a lot of raised detail that was kind of ugly anyway and me being a new modeler I didn't really feel like trying to rescribe anything so I didn't so I've heard bad things about the Vallejo primer but it seemed to work really well for me it sanded nicely and it layered up nicely after sanding. I didn't really have any problems with it. Then I got out some white and started going over it with white. After all, the Thunderbirds are white. And here I glued in the seat because it was time to glue the canopy on. I used that same nail super glue for the seat and for the canopy, and it worked out really nicely. I got out some black primer to prime up some of the parts that I glued on that weren't there before, like the missile rails on the tips of the wings and also around the canopy.
I just used a regular Vallejo white paint for this. Uh, it wasn't the model air kind, so I did thin it down a little bit with some Vallejo thinner. And I'm still trying to get the hang of this airbrush. I haven't really airbrushed in a long time either. I got the Awada Eclipse, and I think I'm going to like it once I get used to it. So after all that, it was time to attach the intake. And I just used some Tamiya Ultra Thin for that as well. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of detail in the landing gear bays. Not really. Oh, and this was a fun part to put on. So the fuselage has this nice little slot that you would think would be used to help attach the tail. Only problem is the tail doesn't have a tab that goes into that slot. So you just kind of have to figure it out. What I figured out is that the fuselage where the tail goes is not flat. And the tail wasn't flat either on the bottom, so it was really hard to get it to sit straight. So out come the sanding sticks. This took a long time, by the way. And there's no pins to line up the tail where it's supposed to go. You just kind of have to guess. I used super glue for this because I was afraid it was going to fall off because there's really nothing holding it, holding it on. And after I glued it, there were a bunch of gaps. So I got out the thick super glue with some acrylic powder and I tried to fill those gaps in as best I could. Then it was time to sand them. I reprimed the model with Vallejo primer just to make sure that I sanded everything correctly. And then I started putting white back on. For the exhaust, I found an old Model Master acrylic paint called Jet Exhaust and I used that to color that. But not the whole thing is supposed to be that color, so I had to add some white. Oh boy, now it's time for the decals. These were fun. So these decals must be really old. Um, they were yellow, and I wasn't sure if there was even a way to fix that, so I just did my best to put them on. Uh, the carrier film was thick and did not want to lay down very good. I must have used a half a bottle of this Mark Fit strong decal solution to try to get these decals to lay down properly. And it was not easy and I did not do a very good job. Layers and layers of that Mark Fit strong solution was no match for these decals. decals didn't really fit very well either, but I did my best.
even though the decals weren't very good quality and they were really hard to work with, I thought the model really started looking cool at this point. This decal was really yellow. You can't really see it in the video, but it was yellow. The decals on the tails were really yellow as well. But what are you gonna do? The one thing about this kit that I found frustrating was, was the landing gear doors didn't have decals. So I just ended up having to find a paint that kind of matched the decal as best as I could. And then I painted those, and then I used super glue to seal the decals. And then I sanded those smooth, and it worked really well. In a past life, I used to turn wood pens on a lathe, and I would use super glue as a finish, and I could sand it glassy smooth. And that was my hope here, is that I could do the same thing, and it worked pretty good. After adding a gloss coat on top of the decals, I tried to weather it a little bit. The model ended up so glossy that most of the wash just wiped right off. It didn't really stay in place at all. But I tried my best. To clean off the wash, I just used a Q-tip dipped in a little bit of enamel thinner. Then it was time to glue on the last pieces. Here's the finished product. I did my best. You can definitely tell it's not perfect. I had to patch a lot of holes in the decals with paint and it's pretty obvious in a lot of places. But, but for not building a model in almost 20 years, it's good enough for me. And that's the whole point of this channel. I wanna document my progress as I get better and better at making models. So I sure hope that my worst model is this one and that every model that I build gets better and better. So some things I learned, I learned I need to learn how to use the airbrush better. I'll need a lot more practice with that. I've learned to be more careful with, uh, with my hands while I'm working because I can tip over bottles of paint or bottles of glue on my desk. This is a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a subscribe, give me a like, let me know in the comments what you think. I'm gonna try posting a video as often as I can and we'll see you next time.